And three. And two. And one. All right, let's go. Hey everybody, welcome back to the fourth episode of Slightly Buzzed. And it is a Saturday. Got ourselves a fine Saturday. A beautiful day in South Line, Michigan. Perfect day to day drink. Uh, let's be honest, boys. Sun's out, birds are chirping. I'm feeling good. I know you guys are feeling good. Oh, yeah. A little quarantine day drinking. Let's do some day drinking. Hell yeah, brother. Uh, let's see. Not too much in the news. Pretty pretty slow news the last couple days. Yeah, you know, not a lot of stuff's popping off. It's kind of same old, same old. Stay inside. Yeah. Six feet away at that whole shindig. Can definitely tell us quarantines. Oh, we're going on week three now. It's getting a little stale. Yeah. yeah it's getting my, a little stale. My hair is starting to get some... Some wings on the side. Bro, I, I tough look. You're getting ready to fly away over there. <laughs> I don't know about all that. Actually, you know he's gonna be out there going Caca! too fat to fly. <laughs> yeah, too fat to fly. Oh, was brushing his crush. Wise words are tied up. Oh, dude, that hurt so bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but anyways, we're gonna we're gonna do our best to enjoy uh, this beautiful Saturday. We're going to do our best to do a little day drinking, that's yeah. for sure. And episode three dropped by the time we started filming this. So go out, go out give that a, Apparently a like and subscribe. Words yeah. are tough. You know, <laughs> had a few. Um, but please like, subscribe, comment on that video. Let us know what you think. Uh, we had a lot of fun filming that. Yes. Uh, so this is the, the fourth podcast we've actually shot. And... Well, I we, think we've definitely shot. We've taken a few takes. Yeah, yeah. This, this, things is, this is the fourth official one we've shot. Yeah, we haven't necessarily made the cut a few times. Yeah, but. and I think we're really starting to figure this thing out, though. Yeah, we you got, know what the people should take from that. We're only here to put out the best content. Yeah, possible. yeah. We're working. We're not for trying well. to give you guys any any bull. You know, we're trying to bring you the best. Definitely. Of what no. we have to offer anyway. <laughs> oh, so I mean, no time like the present, uh, Kyle. Kyle, we got a special. Person? We got a special review today. We boys. do. We yeah, really we do. do. So thanks to Mr. Todd Hobby. Oh, today please. we're going to be trying Draft Horse Brewery's Double D. <laughs> Draft Horse Brewery's Executive Order. This is an IPA. It's a New England style IPA. Ooh. They suggest that you wash your hands and enjoy. <laughs> John, hands right were washed. I see what yeah. they did there. It's a good thing I just did. Oh yeah, Kyle, we got one for you too. Uh, Beautiful. What's that? Oh. Boom! 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 Wow. Three steins, three guys, and a growler full of beer from the one and only Draft Horse Brewery. Yeah, so Draft Horse is right down the road from where we're at. They've got some great food and some phenomenal beers. Great atmosphere, too. It's like oh, very dude. rustic, uh, kind of, a lot of like wooden accents. Speaking of executive order. Speaking of executive order, emergency SOS. What is going on here? No, dude. Was that just me, or is that like, did you guys get that, too? I did not get that. No, I think we're good. I'm going to pour up this beer because, you know, whatever emergency you got going on, you can Dude, figure out Dude, my yourself. phone might have just called something that should not have been called. <laughs> whatever. You I bounce back. I don't know what just happened. <laughs> <laughs> that um, was wild. Oof. Oh, my goodness. All right, well, oh, man, <laughs> on dude, that note. This <laughs> smells so good. Oh, my gosh. Get some people going. <laughs> But yeah, Draft Horse is a spot we hang out at a decent amount. Got some great bartenders, great place to play some darts. Uh, yeah. Oh, but like I said. Piggyback off that, before that. like my phone wow. decided to tweak out over here, uh, Draft Horse Brewery is a great spot locally for people in the, you know, the metro Detroit area. It's a pretty small joint, but at the same time, too, they, they offer a wide variety of things between beers, food, and just amenities, I guess. Yeah. They're always doing some kind of like... You know, new daily like they do Taco Tuesday. Oh, it's great! I love Taco Tuesday. They always got some kind of new beer coming out too. They're very, they're very dynamic and they're very proactive with uh, the things that they do over yeah, there. Bars, man. And <laughs> honestly, they do not put out any bad beers per se. I don't think I've ever gone there and been like, nah. It's always been a great a time. Oh my gosh! So what do we got here? I'm excited That's to delicious. give this one a whirl. You said it's called the executive order? Yeah, it's a clever title. I like it. It is. Nice little wordplay. And it's crazy how quickly they were able to get something this quality out. Yeah, no kidding. Oh. Cheers, boys. Oh, cheers. Cheers. Cheers up. to a Saturday of day drinking. Hell yeah, bro. Slightly buzz. Oh, damn, dude. Wow. Yes. No, that's great. Nice and it just 
It's it's very like warm weather drinking beer. Like yeah. it's, it's 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 got that citrus smack this right is, out of the yeah. gate, but it finishes so smooth. This is a springtime beer. Yes. If I've ever had one. Oh my gosh. No, that's amazing. So we got definitely the citrus. I think we were doing a little bit of reading earlier on it. We got cashmere hops associated with this beer. So the cashmere hops are something that provide that juicy yet uh, the tropical fruit kind of deal right out of the front gate and then they basically gives the beer a very smooth and just palatable finish so it's not going to linger too long it's like you get that initial real strong taste which you definitely get and it's great and it just goes down the hatch no problem yeah I was about to say I think a lot of problems I've ever had with New England IPAs is they just stay too bitter for too long yeah that's a good point and this one is smooth, smooth yeah. finishing. That fruit definitely helps with the bitterness at the end. They really, they, they blend together. Dude, very it nice. smells so good. Yeah, it like, does. It actually it's does actually smell. insane. I've made fun of Tim in the past for smelling beers a little bit if you guys have watched some of the previous videos, but this one's worth a sniff or two. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, just get in there. <laughs> yeah. All right, Kyle, uh, do you have Draft Horse's page pulled up? Yes, I by do. By chance. It's delicious. I'm almost afraid to set this sign in a cup holder or something. Yeah, I just throw it. I'll throw it on the. Maybe I'll just hold it. Yeah, just no, hold it, right? Because yeah. that's the easiest way to get it to and from the old uh, sipper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what do we call that thing? What can I do for you, sir? Uh, what do they say about this beer? What, yeah. What's their description for it? Well, yeah. So this is a juicy floral IPA loaded with citra, mosaic, and cashmere hops. Wash your hands and enjoy. Nice. Okay. It yeah, really makes sense. Yeah, it really does. What's the alcohol percentage on it? Do they have that listed? Six point four percent. Oh, dude, wow, she'll get you it. going. Yeah, I was about to say. I think, boys, I might be in trouble. <laughs> we know you're in trouble. I got you. Don't worry. I think. Uh, <laughs> Spoiler! Throw the life preserver. <laughs> <laughs> throw the damn towel. <laughs> um, no, I think the key to a successful beer, when it comes to a high alcohol percentage, is you get a little bit of the flavor, but it's just not overpowering. And I think the floral and overall IPA -y taste of this yeah. just negates all yeah. of the, the alcohol in a good fashion. There's there are no some doubt. beers that come out swinging with a high, you know, APV or whatever, and they try and cover up that high APV with a lot of flavor. Yeah, with it like doesn't fake flavor. Work. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And it yeah. doesn't always work. It almost kind of makes it just, there's just too much going on. It's hard to you know, get through, you know, if you get a big one, it's hard to get through the whole thing. But yeah. this, you know, I mean, you get a growler the size of that, I mean, this could be gone by the end of the day, no sure. problem. This sure. could be yeah. gone by the end of the afternoon. <laughs> if you're really trying. It I will guess. be gone by the <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> or if you're just casual about it, you know, just, yeah. just one glass after another. Yeah, I'm, this beer's phenomenal. If you like IPAs, if you like New England IPAs, you will love this beer. Yeah, I definitely think if you have the opportunity to stop in and grab anything, from draft horse this would be definitely one to put on your list to oh, yeah. try even if you're you know when things open back up and you're able to go out and start you know well, visiting restaurants and yeah. getting a flight and experiencing just all the different beers that they have there i think would be an amazing choice yeah and they're doing a cool thing right now um they have a drive through both for food and growler fill-ups 12 p.m to 8 p.m yep. every day hence yep. how we have this yeah um, and I believe right now they are doing half off growlers. Yes, sir. Half off um, all growler fills. All day. Promise awesome. you this. We've been taking full advantage of that. <laughs> Clearly. Um, I think this one right now is only like twelve bucks for the growler, which is insanely, insanely That's, great, yeah. greatly priced. Oh, um, insanely well priced. Sometimes next thing you know, some some of these places you get. Charge you an arm and a leg to get a growler filled every once in a while. Not a draft horse, man. Yeah, no, draft horse is really good about it. High quality beers, high quality people. High quality times. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. And they got that nice little patio on, dude, yeah. on the backside. And you know what I was thinking about? They also do the barbecue. I was going to say, they the got back. a smoker oh, on the back. They do little events every once in a while. Where they the smoke sandwich, up a bunch man. of different stuff. Oh, my goodness. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Good beer, good food, good people, good times. And it's right here in your local area. Yeah. Draft Horse Brewery. Yeah, we just want to say once again, thank you, Mr. Harvey, for supplying the beer for this episode. Definitely mm -hmm. appreciate the sponsorship, you know. And uh, T.O. Double D strikes again, Todd Hubby. Um, but, dude, honestly, last night when he brought this home, we were sitting there. He brought home a few growlers, and we were just sitting there testing them, all three of us. We were trying to figure out, you know, which ones we wanted to do. And 
I actually um, think he brought home four. Yeah, we brought home four. And we decided on this one here, and we're like, yeah, this one's really good. And we start, you know, sipping on these beers. Next thing you know, Todd starts pulling out some stories from back in the day. Some really good stories. We're talking okay. legend we're talking stats. Ones, yeah, we're talking ones where he looked at me and he goes, I don't know if you know this. And I've been around for a minute, so I definitely know a majority of them. And uh, it just kind of got me thinking. And me and Tim have talked about this in the past a ton. Just like cruising around, whatever, just shooting the shit. Bro, we were born in the wrong era. I I think a lot of people say that, and I'm not mad about the era I was born in. No, there's definitely but perks. But I definitely think that I feel like if we grew up in, like, the 70s and 80s. Thrive. Thrive, dude. Bro, you're telling me rolling around in just leather jackets and black Trans Ams and whatever else, just like, that would be Dude. electric. You got Motley Crue cranked out your 8-track player or whatever, and you're just like, <laughs> like Dude, it's electric. I'm not even joking. This jacket is my dad's that I stole from him. Um, but <laughs> this jacket is from, like, 1983. Yeah. Stuff was just made better back then. Yeah. And, and I think in a lot of ways. I think in a lot of ways, life's gotten much better. For sure. But, but obviously there are definitely perks to things that, like, as time goes on, things get a little bit better here and there. But at the same time, too, like, you just, there was a lot more, like, versatility back in the day. Or at least, like, you got away with more things. Like, you were, you had, a, like, a little bit more leniency. Like, I hear about some of these stories and the things that they were able to do. Like, for instance, just whipping a snowmobile up to the high school, parking on the front lawn, and going to class. Yeah, like, dude, yeah it doesn't happen. Not? This guy had to fight... Dude. South Lion District <laughs> to ride his motorcycle to school. I had a Ninja 250. It was a eight. weed whip on wheels, and they were like, no. And, dude, <laughs> Miss Bowman, you know, I had to go Name to the drop. school board. I had to go make a speech, and then I had to go to her office because she said they weren't allowed, even though there's nothing against them technically. No, there was the nothing in allowed. any handbook or any code of conduct I had or anything. my cycle endorsement. Yeah. It was perfectly registered, insured, all that good stuff. It was no different. And I, on the, you know the first day of registration for high school when you go on like two or like a week before yeah, class to start? Yeah, your vehicle information yeah, and all I just, that stuff. I drove my motorcycle there and was just like, I'll just do this and then on the first day of school I'll submit my Jeep too. Because hmm. you're allowed two cars. Yeah, what a guy. Dang, Jeep yeah, and a motorcycle senior year of high school. Junior, junior high school. school. Yeah, you suck. Yeah, actually, sophomore year of high school. <laughs> he was like, it's a manual. So, like, I'm pretty much, like, Tokyo Drift out here. He's like, check out the four-banger under the... I was about to say, combined, beauty. combined 87 horsepower between the two. But I um, love sending this guy memes where it's like, automatics win races, manuals, and press girls in high school. <laughs> I, I see no lies. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, no, it's, it's crazy because I think... I don't know what changed society as a whole to just become not overbearing, but just kind of over like just a tight ass about everything. <laughs> like yeah. they're like fun. Sounds dangerous. Not even fun. Yeah. Just like a non-norm. Like sure. I feel like it wasn't that odd for someone to drive a motorcycle to school in like 1985. I don't know. I feel like it's not that odd right now. I feel like it's a really lot not. of people definitely do it. Yeah. Maybe it, not like where we grew up in, like, yes. in a sense, but like, dude, I can't imagine that it's that big of an issue. Or, it's not an issue. It's like, there's definitely people that do it. It's literally no different than it's driving a, It's not against the law in any and way, shape, or form. I appreciate, like, looking back on it, hindsight being twenty twenty. I appreciate what she was trying to do. She just didn't do it the right way. Sure. I, apparently, there was a motorcycle accident like 20 years ago at the other, at the old high school. And she was just like, from here on out, no motorcycles. Yeah. And it wasn't encoded in, in the rules of the law or anything. It was just kind of her thing. Yeah. And I think I may have been the first person to just be like, no. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> you can't say no. Like At least at ease, probably. I'm yeah. Sure. Yeah. I mean. Who knows? But yeah, there's just like, the 80s would have been sick, dude. That's all I'm saying. Oh, 100%. I'm all about it. I mean, think about it. You get cooler classes. All right. I mean. Think, Best what? bands of the 80s. Oh, Ooh. dude. Motley Crue. Yeah, I love them. So yeah, Molly, Molly Crew is absolutely electric, but you can't forget GNR. Oh, Guns N' Roses. Roses. Speaking of the Jeep, growing up in the Jeep, we had the Guns N' Roses greatest hit CD in that car, or in the Jeep, and like mm -hmm. we never took it out. So I listened like this, that album all the way through my entire like early childhood before the Jeep was mine. Oh, man. <laughs> oh dude, memories. Funny story about the Jeep. I want to chime in on this. So when Tim first started driving at sixteen. 
the Jeep only had a CD player in it, so that's how we listened to different music. So we had a bunch of burned CDs or just like yeah. ran, random CDs laying around. And what we'd always be rolling around to it, be like, boys, check this out. He'd pop in a Justin Timberlake CD. And yeah, he'd be bumping JT, riding around in the Jeep, no top, no doors, and just singing like, cry me a river. Dude, I had, I had future sex love, song, uh, love sounds. Yeah, the, the 2006 JT album. With sexy back and what goes around comes yeah. out, and I had um, the twenty twenty the twenty twenty experience with mirrors and um, oh suit and tie. That was that was a was big one. Too. Yeah, yeah, I was a pretty big JT guy there. For that, that album honestly was actually pretty dope. Yeah, the twenty twenty experience. Yeah, that's good. But yeah, the music like I feel like most of the time when we roll around in that Jeep today, we're listening to classic rock that we would have listened to in the eighties. It Classic just, rock, I feel like it music, fits chili peppers. us a little better. It does. Not I mean, saying I dislike modern music at all. Like, no. there's a lot of great stuff right now, a lot of great stuff coming out. But I do think that, like, maybe it's just the households we grew up in. I think we definitely have, like, dynamic libraries of music that we like. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah, you throw anything on, it's high quality music. I'll enjoy yeah, it. Literally. I won't bitch about it at the least, you know? 100%. I definitely find myself, like, Listening to more stuff that's like that though, like from that area, like I listen to Guns N' Roses and like ACDC and Molly oh. Crew, literally probably on a daily, if not bi daily basis, yeah. in some fashion. I feel like this, I keep bringing this up during these podcasts, but if you're ever at my apartment for like a game day, like you're listening to classic rock, like you tell me you're about a, you're in the middle of watching a college football game and Thunderstruck isn't playing in the background at and one point. Yeah, you gotta chug a beer. Not a chip, like, it's gonna happen. Thunderstruck! No. Yeah, so somebody's gotta go. Yeah. You know what I love about Guns N' Roses is for a while in the 80s, we had all these glam metal bands who were yeah. dressing up, putting on that crazy... Kiss. I don't even know the right way to put it. Yeah, just the show, the vibe of the shows were very different, and Guns N' Roses came out. Dude, it was a they, performance. Yeah, they, all the no, way through. they were, let's rock. And yeah. there was none of that glam, it was just, let's shred, Seriously. have a great time. The Axel pyrotechnics, the costumes, the oh. like, the characteristics, the the char they literally get into character on stage. People loved them, dude. It was awesome. Oh. You start looking back at some of these concerts, dude, and you're just like, look oh, at these people, old. man. Like, did did I just see? Was what, did she just flash? The, the what is that? Like, you're like, oh. <laughs> <Dad? laughs> <Dad? laughs> oh. um, for real though, man, it's crazy. You're a huge rock fan. Yeah. What would you say is the biggest difference between like the the 70s and the 80s when it comes to rock mm. i mean personally i think i like the 70s tune a little bit more a little mm -hmm. slower pace i was gonna um, say definitely more melodic yeah. yeah things got a little heavier in the 80s they definitely started throwing more distortion on the guitars Hard jokes. heavy riffs yeah but it's like also it got, it, scream. it got really mainstream so a lot of bands, they were just spitting out bands that were spitting images of one another. Yes. You can go back and listen. Just hair bands. Dude. The entire yeah, hair band era. Band. It was just like, who can be, who can put out the next sketchiest tune with a heavy lick? Mm -hmm. I, like I mean, those songs are phenomenal. Yeah, they're <laughs> like, great. They you're telling great. me you just type like Spotify or Apple Music, just a 80s, band, 80s hair metal yeah. playlist. You're going to have bangers. There's, like, there's no a doubt. reason though that like GNR and Metallica took off late 80s. Yes. It's because people kind of got sick of the hair metal. They were like, we need something yeah. a little heavier. We want to get back into the music. And Talk those bands band offered that. that. Just took over the world. Metallica oh went off. And Dude. I'm not even going to lie. I like Metallica, but I'm not like the, the biggest Metallica fan. Like I'm not, I have a few songs by them that I will listen to on a regular basis, but I don't go out of my way to like listen to a lot of their stuff. But they just absolutely dominated. They they did completely like take over. For yeah. Them. Are they the... The, the number one selling, selling artist of all time? No, I think it's still the Beatles, right? I think it is the Beatles. I think you were telling me that. Yeah. It was the Beatles. I think it's the but Beatles. But wasn't the Stones like a second place? Yeah. It's like Stones, Beatles, then maybe mm. Metallica? No, actually, they're not even in the top seven. So what? Really? Beatles, Garth Brooks, Presley. Garth, Garth Brooks, Brooks is number two? two? What a beast! Wait, oh, dude, yeah. Garth Brooks had an alter ego. Do you remember that? I didn't know. No. That. Look that up. He like literally... Like he by a different name? Yeah, no, he dropped an album. Garth Brooks is nuts. Chris Gaines. Yeah, dude, Chris Gaines. That's it. He literally had an alter ego. Whoa. For what? What kind of music? I did not. It, was it was it rock? It, I think it was it's a, a rock. rock persona. Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah. dude. Wait. Garth Brooks is nuts. Was it a band or just? No, him? it was him. No, he, he just wanted to get away from his country roots. He wanted That's to try hilarious. something new, but he felt like if he did that, Chris people wouldn't Gaines. like it. I think it, I think it fell Gaines. off. Well, I know what I'm doing later today. <laughs> Not listening to Chris Gaines, I'll tell you that. I'm listening to Chris Gaines. Um, yeah, dude. 
That's hilarious. Wait, name the name the rest of those off. Yeah, I yeah. want to know what this. That is nuts. Like. Him at number two. Never would have guessed that. All right, so we got Presley in third. The Eagles. Presley dad. does not surprise me. No, Elvis is a guy. You know, he's a big fucking Presley fan. My dad. Todd. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, your dad. My what? Your dad. Dude, was I, like two I I visited my dad? Graceland. Did you? Did that you? shit was sick. Bro, really? I, yeah, no, hundred percent. Like, I love me tender. It's just like, dude. I grew up listening to a lot of Elvis, dude. Elvis, is huge. and I love Elvis. Like, there's so many, Him so many great songs. Elvis and his Madonna nice. is the only thing that plays in my household at Christmas time. So, just for anybody who's not familiar, Graceland is Elvis's home in Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah, Yo. I was on my way down to watch the. Um, maybe we're on our way back. It was one of the two. Um, went down to go see Michigan play in the 2011 Sugar Bowl, right. 2011 season, 2012, um, early January. But anyways, was, we won. We beat Virginia Tech. <laughs> Matt. And, um... <laughs> Continuously dragged to the mud. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, we stopped on the way back. Dude, it's crazy. There was, like, a museum. His house turned into a museum. Yeah. And his private jet's still there. That was nuts. Which, and it wasn't, like, a private jet. It was, like, a Boeing 737 thing. It was massive. And, no, it was, it was really cool. Um, it's crazy to think about how we don't understand... I don't think our generation really understands that kind of fandom because the way the radio worked, the way the media worked back in the day, like it was Elvis. Yeah. Everyone, nobody didn't know Elvis. Like right. there's, there's big artists right now. You think you're like Drake's or Ariana Grande, you know, whatever genre it is, but there's still a decent amount of the population who can stay in their echo chamber Ooh. and listen to stuff they <laughs> like to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh that wasn't the case because everyone had a limited access to media and those media conglomerates were all controlled by the same people so they were pushing the same stuff yeah. and that's not to take away from how good you know elvis was or the beatles were right but it's just the way it, it was, was. and it was like different. if they went out in public at all they're the donezo yeah. like I'm pretty sure the Beatles had to cancel See, the, live shows because there was too much hysteria and too much screaming behind them. Let's put this into perspective, though. That, like, Tim just really emulated how big Elvis really was. And, like, he had all this stuff, and he was the number one... Probably the... He was the most popular artist for forever. Oh, yeah. The man died on the toilet. <laughs> like, it does not matter who you are. Dude was a heifer at the end. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it does not matter who you are. Like, shit's wild. I, yeah. Life comes at you quick. Amer I'm going to throw this out there real quick for all the listeners. Go home, type into YouTube after you watch this podcast. Um, type in 1973 Live from Honolulu, an American trilogy mm -hmm. by Elvis Presley. The note he hits at the end of that song should not be humanly possible. It's crazy how these artists have evolved over time, but yeah, I mean, it is what it is. No, here you do. It's wild. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm out, so I'm going to top <laughs> I'm gonna, myself I'm gonna, off here. Gonna, you boys I'm gonna, I'm gonna, look like, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I say, I say, I say son, I say boy. <laughs> For all you don't know, that's Foghorn, Leghorn. Educate yourselves. Some great, speaking of stuff from back in the day, uh, Looney Tunes, hilarious. <laughs> yeah, cartoons suck nowadays. That, Jeez. that is fair. Yes. That is fair. Small, I'm going to come, come back there, give you a little bit. Thanks. Um, so what, uh. So you said Eagles were four? Yeah. Who do you think was five? Um, rock? Yeah, it's a rock band. You said you like 70s. It's one of the seven. I think you like 70s rock. Zeppelin? Band. Yeah, it was Zeppelin. Let's, Let's go! go. Let's go, dude. Stairway to Heaven, electric song. So good. Man, these All guys are selling hundreds of that's millions crazy. Dude, of units of music. Can we, can we touch imagine. on the Eagles real quick? Sure. Because the Eagles are four, right? We said yeah, this. they were four. I believe yeah. it. Dude. I stumbled across the Eagles a couple summers ago, and I cannot stop listening to them. Straight up, like my one of my all-time favorite songs at this point is "Tequila Sunrise." I'm, I kind of touched on it for like 2.2 seconds in a previous episode, but dude, the Eagles killed it, man! Like they were so good, and their lead singer was a drummer. <laughs> yeah, that's insane. <clears throat> True story. Um, my first album, first hard copy CD I ever owned, was. Hell Freezes Over by the Eagles. Dude, Life in the Fast Lane, Tequila Sunrise, Whoa. Hotel California. Ta I mean, take It Easy is... Take It Easy, just Lion Eyes. I mean, these songs are just absolute... They're classic. You know what's crazy is like when you think of classic rock bands, I guess for some reason the Eagles, even though I listen to them a decent amount, are never like 
at the forefront of my mind. Yeah. They have such like a mellow vibe. Yeah. It's just like, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know why. I love them. Dude. But I four of all time. But also they've been releasing music forever. Yeah, that's fair. Who are the Eagles? I, I'm pretty sure that Hell Freezes Over album was from like the mid nineties. Yeah, probably. They're definitely there. And then you know what yeah, the Eagles right. remind me of? Ninety four. They yeah. really translate for me heavily into like the chili peppers. Like it's not at all the same kind of tune, but they just have a lot of, like okay, so no, hear me out for a second. So the chili peppers are a very distinct tune, but the way they just I don't know, their sound, I guess, I don't know what I'm trying to say, right, which, but it which, just which, translates so well for me, because one is like the classic era of that kind of music, and then the Chili Peppers just take it and just add a whole other dynamic to it. I think I get what you're saying, but I'm not counting Blood Sugar Sex Magic. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. Their album's after that. I kind of get it. They definitely get a little funky every once in a while. The Peppers do. Well, dude, because Blood Sugar Sex Magic was released in, I want to say, 1989, and that's when, like... The was it really pop, early? Yeah, dude. Wow, man. Or, fact check me on that, actually. It was, it was, um, but I'm like 90% sure it was 1989. The Chili's have been around for a minute. Um, but that's when it was like, you know, give it away and like more of the rock rap type situation. Sure. And I don't get Eagles in that at all. But they're like later albums, Californication, Arcadian Stadium. It was actually in 1991. Damn it. Ugh. All right, close enough. Yeah, like I said, I mean, they definitely have very distinct tunes, but just like the, I don't know, I just, I love the way, like, they contrast each other, but, like, still kind of emulate that whole, like, West Coast vibe. Mm -hmm. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. 100%. But, yeah, um, I think getting back to the whole born in the wrong era thing, I think it might be just part of youth and, you sure. know, looking at what your life's going to be, kind of, and what we know is what life was like. So we're like, oh, damn, dude, that would have been sick. I was going to say, dude, I think it has a lot to do with, like, experiences you hear about that you're just like, well, there's no chance I ever do anything <laughs> like that. Like, why yeah. can't we do that now? But then it's like you look at the things, you might not look at the things that you're able to do now that you weren't able to do then. So yeah. it's like, I, there's gonna go, you're going to go back and forth on it all the time. So, like, in a perfect world, be like, yeah, I would rather keep this, this, and this about this time period, but then, like, let's bring in a little bit of that, sprinkle some of that in here from, yeah. like, the 80s and 70s, whatever. That'd be sweet. I just think people were more well-rounded. I guess, like, once again, sure. we weren't there. We were not there, so Dude. we don't know. But I feel like people, I feel like with the, especially the advent of um, social media, mm -hmm. and I feel like everyone's attention spans have gotten l lesser, and I feel like we're less social human beings in general. And like I said, this might be wrong, but this is my view of the 80s. I feel like people were much better talking to one another, much better with interacting with one another all the time. Because you couldn't go home and talk to someone on your phone. Like, you right. could talk to someone on your phone you call one person at a time. You can't have a text conversation with ten different people, you know. If you want to talk to a girl, you got to call up and be like, hello, mister. I mean, like, yeah, like, exactly. How many, times, how many times have your parents talked about, like, oh, how come your friends don't, like, don't talk to us or anything? They just act like we're not here. Like, but think about it. Like, our parents are just kind of like, always oh, socialize and always oh, trying to talk to people. And then your friends come over and some of them are just like, I, I was about to say, I think we're pretty good at that. There's just a total social disconnect between entire generations, and it's wild to see, and I think you're right, because social media and tech and all that stuff at the forefront of what we do is just kind of just deteriorating. Yeah, and I think, social cues. I think we, like our age group, is some of the last. Because, I mean, I grew up in a household that technology really wasn't readily available. Sure. I, my parents were pretty strict about giving me a phone or letting me play video games. I was only allowed to watch like 40 minutes of TV a day or something like that. Yeah. That was just sports center. So like, yeah, it, it's true that I, I'm very glad the way I was raised because when I got to high school, I started to hang out with friends and interacting with their parents. Like, I think they took note of that. And to be honest, like I've, I've learned so much from my parents and my friends' parents, just like talking to them. Cause I, I think older generations are super willing to pass down wisdom. Like, sure. as long as it, if it comes in a way that's not like a preachy way, mm -hmm. but like it's just it's two constructive. friends having a yeah. conversation, and you know they've got way more wisdom and experience than we do, and they just tell us these stories like that. And I think that's something that is a lot of people our age are missing out on. One hundred percent, dude. Some of the best conversations and like best relationships I've made are with people who are like. Literally, Way old. generations old. Yeah, like yeah. ten, like a decade older than me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's actually wild to sit there and see perspectives on like what they see going on today, the and then you're like, oh yeah, I guess I didn't think of it like that. And like, 
like you said, dude, they just have a wealth of knowledge of things they've experienced. And yeah. a lot of the times it's very beneficial and applies to what's going on today at the same time. Just all about how you take it in. So I think that a lot of people are missing out on that because nobody knows how to talk to each other anymore. Yeah, but I'm also interested to see maybe that was the case for them as well Could at be. our age. But I there do was a think huge disconnect for a lot of those generations, especially with the way that like media was translate, like just pushing things in a certain direction, and kids were starting to rebel super hard. I think yeah. that applies pretty hard to the '80s, man. Like that's a total stigma. Yeah, like, that's that early fair. '80s, like oh, we're gonna rebel, like free that's love. Definitely a stigma. We're not gonna take it. The, so much up, no, no, we ain't gonna take yeah, it. Yeah, I mean you got like. I mean, obviously, um, Reagan that? was elected and he was like, you're going to take it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's definitely a thing like free love and free speech, whatever. I mean, the whole movement in the 60s, 70s, and then translating to the 80s with hard rock and hair bands and just like, you know, punk rock was the shit. And it was like, mm-hmm. I'm going against the system. I'm not trying to be this way. And it was just, that was a total fad. That was a total scene for a minute. Well. Wow. There's definitely perks to living today, though. Like, I'm very oh, well. thankful to have such a great access to information via the Internet. 100%. Oh, yeah. No, no, 100%. I think society is, society is more <laughs> accepting of people, and there's, there's a lot of positives and a lot of strides society's made in the last 20, 30 years. I guess just on a lot of ways, I think, like, those are the things that I wish were readily available in the 80s. Sure. And those are things that I think would have been readily available in the 80s. I think that was kind of like a human nature instinct to rebel against whatever it was. Yeah. And, but those things could have been easily fixed, like the, I think what we're seeing today. But in a lot of ways, I wish we almost had less technology, mm-hmm. is, as weird as that is to say. I think it's good to separate from technology every once in a yeah. while. Sure. Like technology is definitely an asset, but it'd be... You can abuse it like anything oh, else. Oh, yeah, dude, it's, it's so, addictive. Yeah, like it's take time addictive. to like step away from it and like do something constructive, like a, get away from a screen or get away from a social media platform at some point. It, dude, it does wonders for a yeah. person. I've seen it, I've done it. I dude. know what it's like to just be immersed in this stuff and then you step away from it. It's like, it's I'm telling therapeutic. You, man, I'm telling you, um, my grandpa used to live up north, so we go up and travel up to his cabin. And you guys have both been up there, Beautiful. and it's yeah, in the it's middle. Of, it's in the middle of the Huron National Forest, and it's literally no cell service, nothing. Mm-hmm. You can get three channels of TVs. So you can watch some college football on Saturday, which is huge. <laughs> totally but, um, huge. I'm like a tw- I'm like a 15 inch TV up there, but that's kind of the way I want it. I want to unplug. I want to enjoy myself. Enjoy what it is to be a human. You know. Yeah, man. Um, Little side note, little segue here. Uh, I ran out of beer in my glass here, and I kind of want to save a little bit of that for later. What do you say we give the people a little sneak peek at the other beer we brought here? Because today's not just a one beer episode, it's kind of a double whammy. Double dose. Yeah, we brought another beer in from Draft Horse that we all really like a lot. It's <laughs> We've an absolute all staple of the Draft Horse community. And if you've been there before, you've probably had it. It is the one and only Peanut Butter Stout. Mm-hmm. Is it chocolate peanut butter stout? Chocolate peanut butter stout. Yes, thank you for correcting me. Go ahead and close that. And we got the classic. Bang. Draft horse mugs that we're going to slap this bad boy in. And then Kyle's, which says save water, drink beer. Yeah, also. (laughs) I'm out of we're all willing to stand by. I don't know if our viewers noticed, but I'm definitely rocking Draft Horse t shirt right now. It's a great color, really makes my eyes pop. In case uh, all the ladies are watching here, just check it out. I hate you so much. I hate me too. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? Oh, like yeah. good stuff. Yeah. So, so draft horse. I'm gonna stand up and pour these boys because I don't want to mess this up. So I appreciate good you. Call. So draft horse describes this as a chocolate peanut butter stout. It's a rich, creamy, delightful drink. Delightful, huh? Simple yeah. And sweet. She's so, a beauty, eh? When we were talking about doing this for the show, I was talking to Kyle about how like there is definitely certain beers for a certain time mm-hmm. oh dude that's all you gave me you well me. i'm trying to make sure we disperse this evil a little more yeah, open that there we go Kyle's brewery well, here's Kyle's, 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 Kyle's right oh here. Kyle's is right here beauty yeah. look at this what does this say save water drink beer <laughs> decent um but we we're talking about how there's there really are different types of beer for different times of the day or different occasions and this is one of those dude this is a dessert beer this is drinking a reese's cup like it is so damn good it is so damn enjoyable 
and I am stoked to break into it. Let's give her a whiff. Even though I bought one of these like two weeks ago. <sighs> but cheers it up once again, boys. Doesn't get old, man. No, never oh. does. Never has. Never will. Drink this for two years straight. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's a it's a total dessert beer. It's just one of those things you either mm. you just go. Mmm, mm, so good. Mmm, so good and tasty. For man, like you cap off your day with it, or you just go and sit down and have one of these, just just to have it. Cheers up, boys. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's like so the feeling good. of home. Oh. It's and it's so, so easy good. to drink, too. Butter. Like, when you think of peanut butter, peanut butter is super, just, it's a thick, it's a dense, just, consistency. And then you get the chocolate in there, but then you just, you put it into beer, and it's just so smooth. And That's It makes intense. you feel so good. She's a 10. Holy smokes. Um, it's interesting because I think they went to what it is now. Then I think they put it on nitro for a while. They did have it on and nitro. And then I think they took it back off nitro. The nitro there, was good though. There was a difference in the texture, obviously. I mm. liked the nitro um, a lot. This is on par, if not better. So what are you guys getting for flavors in this beer? Chocolate, peanut butter. Chocolate, peanut <laughs> butter, and oh, it's like man. a stout form of both. Oh my yeah. gosh, you guys suck. <laughs> it's almost like it's a Chocolate peanut butter stout. No, yeah, literally, but it's it's truly like a liquid dessert. That it it gets really you, is. Get, I, gets you going. I really, I'm making fun of you, but like, there's not really a better way to describe it. Chocolate it's, peanut butter. Makes it's like a thin, creamy. It's like a thin milkshake yeah, that gets you drunk. I like that description. Yeah. Yeah, it's you know got a little octane. Like you ever made you ever made like a homemade milkshake just by like putting ice cream? And, yeah. Next thing and you know, milk. you had a little too much milk, so the viscosity is a little light on it. Yeah, that's kind of like. This is way better than that, but no it's kind of that. <laughs> I don't think small small way of a discrepancy with my viscosity comment. <laughs> yeah, I just, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just it's such a good all around beer. If you at this this is my go to dessert beer. Yeah, man. Zero dot in my mind. This is kind of one of those things where you can just go and sit down at the bar and have one of these. Or I mean, you can have it with a light meal. I personally don't like to eat it with a meal. I like to cap off my, my meal with something like this. Yeah. Or you just, like, pick up a growler or so or whatever else, and, you know, you show up to maybe, like, a little gathering or whatever, and you share with everybody else. It's just, like, one of those things that it's so good. I have not heard anybody say they don't like it, honestly. Okay, this is what I want to get into real quick. I think people our age don't tap into the craft beer market specifically with stuff like this enough. No, no, no. Like dude, yeah. like you just said, nobody you've ever met that has tried this has been like, oh dude, this is bad. No, but no, then you it's... take it somewhere and everybody looks at you like, geez, where'd you get this? Yeah, dude. <laughs> the bang for your buck is so much better than like any domestic beer you can buy. And I, I find it incredible that people our age don't like actively pursue different types of craft beers. So, I mean, that's what we're here to do for you. Yeah, they're all just but, like, yo, where's my Natterday at, dude? <laughs> Natterdays have their place. Have Natterdays, bro? They have their place. But they have their place, yeah. but I think we need to expand the palate a little bit. Don't get me wrong. I like a um, Natterday every once in a while, but... We know. <laughs> I'm going to choose one of these over a Natterday every day of the week. Yeah, dude. No, no doubt. Like, it's no. actually incredible yes. how, how much people are missing out on stuff oh. like this. And like I said, it's not... Bang for your buck, you're getting way more value. Mm -hmm. Ten times out of ten. Without a doubt. And I just, it's almost like a shame, like, that people aren't. And think about how many different breweries there are. Just in this region, man, not even just Michigan or, like, the metro Detroit area or wherever we're at. Just, like, the entire Midwest, there's so many different breweries that have their own different blends of things. And I feel like a lot of the times, like, it gets overlooked by a certain demographic. We need to... Open your eyes, people. Go For explore real. some beers. Gets the people going. It gets provocative. It gets the people going. Oh, my gosh. No, but for real, you need to you need to branch out. You need to step away from just the normal, mundane, you know, light beer that you're used to drinking and just go try some of these different breweries, man, because they have such a great concoction of mixtures. And, oh, God, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's it's really awesome. But I think, honestly, I think that's one of the missions we had or one of the goals we had with this podcast Yes, is getting people to just 
branch out a little bit. Straight up. Push you, push you in the right direction. I mean, like I said, we love stopping in a new place and checking out new beers. If we see something we haven't seen before and it looks good, just snag it just to try it. I mean, yeah. it's something that we do all the time. And it's like, why do more people not try this? Next thing you know, you're hanging out with people and you're like, oh, have you guys had this? Like, they're like, never no. even heard of it. And you're like, what do you mean, dude? Like, yeah. bro, no, dude. <laughs> And the get quicker the quicker you get on that train, the quicker you realize you know, there's there's some greener grass over there. It will literally change your life. So yeah, words of the wise, not so wise, but definitely buzzed. The slightly buzzed. Um, <laughs> go out, try some new stuff. Never hurts. If you don't like something, you don't have to drink it. Yeah, for real. Get it. something else. Uh, the other thing is, most of these craft brew places they allow you just take a little sip of something to give it a, give it a shot. Yeah, you'd be like, let me get a sample. I'm yeah. like, Deli delightful. Let's do it. Um, but shifting gears a little bit, uh, I got a DM from a very good friend and mentor of mine the other day. And sorry, get me thinking. It was which play could you have back? And this is specific. This this post was specific to Michigan fans. It was the JT we the got a short lot of those, call oh, you mean like sports play. Yeah, sports play. Yeah, yeah. Um, this was the JT was short call against Ohio State in 2016. Give me nightmares or over here. Or <laughs> the. Um, Trey Burke's clean block on Peyton Siva in the 2013 national title game. Um, and I was just like, looking back on it, there's so many sports plays that I just wish the outcome could have changed. Dude, we could say that for every single drive in late November. <laughs> like, there's so many plays you wish you could have back. Dude, it's just, I feel like the Charmin think... Polar Bear after this whole pandemic goes away. It's just PTSD. <laughs> Thank you. <Jeez. laughs> I know, exactly. <laughs> just pick that up. Don't oh, worry, people will drop yeah. the meme in the freaking video if you can see it. But, like, oh, Jesus dude. Christ. Um, that was close. Personally, there's, there's two moments in my and I'm a gigantic sports fan. You know, there's three moments. First is the JT was short because I personally think that if we beat Ohio State in 2016, we definitely win the Big Ten that year because the Big Ten West was weak, and we're in the Final Four. There's no doubt. Mm -hmm. If if we beat Ohio State and we win the Big Ten title game, we're in the Final Four. And that team had like 32 NFL players. It was the largest. What it was, we we, we broke the out. record for the most draft picks. Yeah, the most from draft that, picks from, from that, that season, 2016 season. Yeah, um, and it sucks that that didn't work out. I think that's my number one because I think that changes the trajectory of the Harbaugh era in Michigan. I think that shows year two, we've beaten Ohio State, we've beaten our in-state rival, and we've shown that we can hang with the big boys. And that's just year two. And I think that win kind of demoralized them, or that loss demoralized the program a little bit, dude. unfortunately. Um, number oh, two. That loss, dude? Are you kidding me? We lost like 62 to what in the next year? 62. <laughs> no, the next year we just. Uh, next year was John O'Corn. And he threw the, <laughs> the yeah, most. Maybe the 62 wasn't the right word. No, 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 no. no, no. Even worse, in more oh. true to Michigan fashion. John O'Corn throws a terrible pick when he's got two wide open receivers, throws a pot fly when we have a chance to beat Ohio State at home as underdogs. So that sucked. Next year, 62 to 39. That sucked. This year, not great. Awful. Anyways, the first drive was sick, though. Um, the second one for me, 2007 Super Bowl, uh, David Tyree helmet catch. Everyone knows about that one. I cried and missed Big two days of guy. school. That was the only time my mom let me skip school in my entire life. He cried during the the Super Bowl against the Seahawks too. They dude, caught that catch all the way down like the dude, five yard okay, line. Because he it thought was, it was over. This no. man was sitting there, tears in his eyes, and he was like, "I just, I can't see the Patriots lose again on bullshit." <laughs> dude, no, okay, because the Patriots have a lot. Okay, the Eagles Super Bowl, I will give to him. Brandon Graham made a great play on Brady, but even that one, Brady threw for five hundred yards and put up 31, 33 points, but. The, the 2007 Super Bowl, the David Tyree catch was such shit. That dude has five what career receptions. What about that Julian Edelman catch against hey, the Falcons? Hang on. He made the catch, though. So you It's such catch, shit. What right? about the dude, Julian Edelman the catch against the Falcons? Brady threw for 300 yards in the fourth quarter okay, in overtime. That has nothing to do with it. It would have been, okay, been incomplete, and it would have been second and ten. Not that big of a deal. <laughs> Point being, that happened... And then the 2011 Super Bowl, Mario Manningham shouts out Michigan. Yup. Um, One of the all-time great receivers to ever come to the program. But he wasn't a phenomenal NFL receiver. No, and the wasn't. fact that Eli Manning literally on both of those throws closed his eyes and just lobbed it up. 
There was no skill involved. Like, Eli Manning literally just was like, all right, no I'm going to fuck it. What about the guy who caught it? For Eli, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Manningham and Tyree. Tyree's catch was 100% lucky. I don't even think there was skill involved. Literally, it got stuck, jammed to his helmet. Rodney Harrison hey. came down, spiked the ball Whoa. like he's supposed to. Don't lie. Yeah. Anyways. It just don't. It don't. The reason, <laughs> the reason I was emotional because exactly. in the Seattle Super Bowl is because Malcolm Butler made a great play on the ball, knocked it away. It bounced off of Curse's uh, foot and then his chest, and then he caught it laying on the ground at the five-yard line. And I was like, all right, there's a third straight Super Bowl where you completely hoed. So, yeah, I wasn't happy. <laughs> he goes, and then, yeah, he literally stood up. He goes, yeah, everybody, I'm fucking crying, okay? You happy? And then he, like, walked off. And then Malcolm Butler saved my life. Yeah, and then that interception happened. He goes, I knew we were going to win. And it was just like, <laughs> it was the most just, oh, sweet Jesus. Oh, it was the most emotional roller coaster ride for a Super Bowl I've ever been a part of. Uh, definitely twenty eight to three more. So well, I wasn't. But I had I one, had but... faith that they were gonna win. I doubled down on all my bets at halftime. That's just because you were pissed. You doubled down on bets all the time and lose because you're mad. I made a lot of money that Super Bowl though. Anyways, and then yes. third is third is probably. The... I'm pretty sure you doubled down against Ohio State. I did. <laughs> because dude, that was the sixty two to thirty nine year. I doubled down because it was. 21 to 19 at half, something like that. Like, and we scored two touchdowns. We scored two <laughs> touchdowns in the last minute and a half of the half. And like we played the worst half of the, uh, the year and we were only down two points. And I was like, oh dude. I just yeah. remember that, that <laughs> like a couple on. days after the game, he was like, I gotta stop drinking during these games, dude. I lost a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And then number three would probably be the Trey Burke block on Peyton Siva. Which was clean as fuck. Out. It was such a, oh, God. Clean that one pisses me off. I mean, that one's just I, genuinely, the thing is, oh, shit. I don't know if we win that Jesus. game even with that block being clean, but that was definitely no, like, the breaking game changer. point. That was the breaking point. Yeah. I think it was a four-point game that turned into a six-point game. Oh, God. Game. What about you? Dude, I mean, for me, I think the Trey Burke one might be number one. I think JT is short as two. I, I'm a Lions fan, dude, so, like, I don't have a ton to work with here uh, outside of Michigan football or Michigan basketball because, like, what do you really have? <laughs> you got nothing. Maybe that, maybe that, uh, oh, what was it? They called the game against Dallas, Lions versus the Cowboys for the oh. playoff. It was like a wild card game. Yeah. To get into the playoffs, we got hoed hard. Wasn't on, the like, lack a pass of interference? There or wasn't some a shit. flag. There wasn't a flag was, throw. Yeah, oh yeah, there was no flag on a pass interference call, and literally everybody on ESPN, all the reporters at the game were just like, "So yeah, that was uh, that was tough. That should have been called." Yeah, and, <laughs> and then every single Lions fan yeah. is just sitting there, just like. Raging. Because, I remember being so pissed. Because the next week after that was the Dez caught. Yeah, the it was back to back. It was yeah. like Dallas got instant karma. Because oh Dez God. definitely caught that ball. Yeah. And then they were like, nope. But like other than that, I don't really even care about that because dude, the Lions piss me off more than anything. I'm like the worst Lions fan ever, but I still try and root for them when I can. So does it count for me? I don't know. I think <laughs> one and two are like my only solid picks. So, am I crazy or have we not mentioned trouble with the snap? We don't talk about that. Oh, it's I see. Small, uh, no, no, that, well, I guess, I guess, it. no, I'm we're talking, talk, we're talking about small, uh, My dad, I was, we were at the Greenfield Village for the Halloween walk when that game happened, and my dad took his phone and whipped it against a wall. Hmm. I didn't talk for 15 minutes, then killed a fifth and 40. Southern Comfort. Oh, yeah, he, he sent me a Snapchat it. later that night, and he's like, I effing hate Michigan football. And then, like, he sent me another snap the next morning, he's like, I threw up so much. <laughs> I woke up on the floor of a Western Heights, Western Michigan University dorm. I didn't live in the dorms. I was getting Snapchats <laughs> from uh, other people who were just like... Michigan dead. football is <laughs> the dead. is the number He's one dead. toxic influence in my life. Brings me the highest highs and the lowest of lows. But yeah. there's been more lows than there has been I was going to say, what's your last highest of highs? <laughs> Beating Michigan State? Yeah, we've been beating them online the past couple of years. It's not even that fun anymore. Well, I mean, they're... That program's falling apart. It's a tough scene. But yeah, dude. I mean, I don't really have... Do you have any other ones? I mean, 2010 Celtics, uh, game six. If Kendrick Perkins doesn't get hurt, we win game six and win the finals. Paul Pierce has two. 
That sucks. The big three probably stays together. Ray Allen probably doesn't go to Miami. I think maybe Jordan Spieth not being able to go wire to wire all the way through the Masters not was clutch. a brutal time. Not clutch. He literally made it through three rounds and in the final round just blew it. Shit the bed. I was so pissed. Yeah. What was that, like 2016, 17? I think it was 2016, yeah. God. Yeah. But yeah, I think that, uh, I mean, that pretty much sums I'm, it up for me, dude. Yeah, I'm like, I'm I don't so like to dwell on these beer. moments. Like, just like I said, it makes <laughs> me sad. all upset. You're like, oh, all these, all these bad memories. But yeah, it's, I mean, it's it's never fun to go over some of the worst sports moments in your life, but it was interesting to rank them a little bit in my head, at least. Yeah, you hate to bring it up. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, man. I mean, I see that Kyle's out of his peanut butter stout, which is unfortunate. Yeah, dude, it was awesome. Um, Kyle, I would love to get your final thoughts on that beer. Yeah. I've never had anything like it in my life. Creamy, very flavorful, peanut butter chocolate, absolutely delicious. It is 7%, so... What about the viscosity? <laughs> We're not going to talk about that. You already touched on that. I hit the point. nail on the head? All right, cool. This is a stand-up beer in my mind. This was absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> this kid's like, I know a fancy <laughs> word. I'm just like, yeah, I took eighth grade science class. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, no, but uh, I think you're spot on, man. Peanut butter stout is one of my all-time favorites. It's a yep. staple in my favorite beer collection. Um, I think all in all, Draft Horse really just kind of killed it today. Um, I pretty much knew going into it that I was going to like these beers. The, I, new, the executive order is one that I haven't tried prior to last night, and I was excited after we tasted it to really bring it on the show today because it's it's awesome. It was such a good I, beer. It was great for the time period. It's great for springtime, moving into summer. I know I, you got some things to say. I was about to say, you hit the nail on the head there. I think there is something to be said about a beer that fits its timing yeah. perfectly. And that is a perfect springtime beer. Mm -hmm. There's no other way to say it. Uh, probably a great summer beer as well, but there's something about the floral the floral hints to it. Yes. Um, tastes like sunshine, dude. It tastes like sunshine. It tastes like just... But, but also there's a little bit it's of awesome. bitter, just like, the, just like the wind during the springtime. You know, it keep, keeps you aware, you know, it's still Michigan. It just gives you vibes um, like things are about to warm up. And yeah, just, exactly. And you know, get nicer out. And, and then... Just like we're finishing up the podcast with some of the peanut butter stout, you finish up a day with some peanut butter stout, yeah, it's and like you're, you're sending top. off your evening, evening real nice. So, um, I mean, I don't, I don't think I have anything else, dude. Nah, yeah. man. Like I said, all in all, Draft Horse, great brew spot. If you guys are able to go check it out, definitely do so. Great yeah. local brewery, and you know, I think, I think I'm definitely, you know, I'm feeling pretty good yeah. about uh, <laughs> everything that we talked on today and the beers themselves so i just want to throw out there one more time make sure to like and subscribe to our channel uh we'll put our socials back up here again and they're in the um, description well, as i say well, appreciate so. the instagram from popping off a lot of people have been following us so appreciate yes. and, and appreciate the interaction people saying yeah, sure. giving us recommendations yeah. about what we want to drink that's been great we've been getting a lot of feedback um and we are actually starting to create a list here uh the beers that you guys are telling us to try we're coming up in the next couple episodes so uh, we look forward to doing that. And other than that, I hope everyone has a great weekend. You'll probably be seeing this early in the week. So hope you're killing it. And, uh, you yeah, know, stay slightly buzzed, folks. Stay slightly buzzed. Aye.